I love GoPro cameras and have used and tested pretty much every new GoPro that has come out in the last few years. GoPro has now introduced a new Hero 12. Many will buy it again this year and many will criticize it again this year. But many criticisms and disappointments are based on a series of misconceptions and you should know them well before you get a new GoPro, so you avoid unnecessary disappointment. So here are the 12 most common misconceptions and misbeliefs when it comes to GoPro cameras. A GoPro is the perfect all-around camera. Wrong. A GoPro is a great action camera with an extremely wide lens that's perfect for POV shots and for creating an immersive look when shooting action. It's also great for vlogging and works well as a travel camera. But it's not the perfect all-rounder. It only has one proper focal length and isn't suitable for close-up shots. Close-ups of faces suffer from strong distortions. It also doesn't have a proper zoom, only a digital one. A good smartphone camera with multiple lenses is therefore the much better all-round solution. A GoPro should definitely also be well suited for shooting in low light conditions. Many GoPro users want better low light capabilities. This is evident from the great interest in low light tests and of course the fact that not only GoPro but also other manufacturers such as DJI are trying to improve the low light capabilities of their action cameras. And there is nothing fundamentally wrong with that. But first, a low light scenario is not necessarily a typical use for an action camera. And second, there are clear physical limits. Better performance in low light requires a larger sensor and or a larger aperture of the lens. Neither of these is necessarily ideal for use as a classic action camera. A larger sensor and a larger aperture result in less depth of field which is not best for a camera with a fixed focus. A larger sensor is also not only more expensive, it can potentially lead to more problems with overheating in a small waterproof body, especially if you also want high frame rates. Yes, it's true that the GoPro's low light performance has gotten a bit better over the years, but I wouldn't focus too much on that. It remains predominantly an action camera that I think needs to perform well, mainly in good lighting conditions. Should you still want to shoot with a GoPro in low light conditions, then you can find a tutorial on my channel on how to best set up your GoPro for that. A GoPro is great for cinematic shots. Again, this is not necessarily true. By cinematic, you generally mean the look of a professional film. And there are many efforts and tutorials on how to achieve such a cinematic look with a GoPro as well. I don't want to criticize these tutorials at all, but hardly any professional filmmaker would choose a GoPro as a tool, and if only for very specific purposes. The white fisheye lens with its strong distortions is not well suited for a professional cinematic look. The same goes for the field of view linear, which can also only remove some of the distortion completely. Moreover, it is also not possible to create a blurred background with a GoPro, and this is precisely a typical feature of many cinematic shots. Yes, you can approach a cinematic look, but even for that, Many good smartphone cameras are better. GoPro has by far the best electronic stabilization. It has to be said that GoPro was an absolute pioneer in the field of electronic image stabilization. And for a long time, no other manufacturer could really keep up in this area. And even though GoPro has improved the stabilization again this year, other manufacturers like Insta360 or DJI have long since caught up and now the differences are only marginal. The good stabilization should therefore not be the decisive argument to go for a GoPro. And by the way, a detailed test of the new GoPro will follow soon on this channel, and of course, I will also compare the stabilization of the new camera with the stabilization of the best other action cameras. A GoPro has the best mount of all action cameras. Unfortunately, that's also wrong. And here it is similar to the stabilization. GoPro did the groundwork, but then rested on its past achievements for a long time. The competition caught up, adopting the GoPro mount to some extent and combining it with a magnetic mount system. Today, DJI and Insta360 offer a better and more flexible system with a magnetic mount system. This also allows you to remove the camera one-handed without screwing and attach it to another mount much faster. That's just a big advantage. And since we are on the subject of mounts, the accessories and mounts that come with a GoPro are enough for most purposes. They are sufficient to use a GoPro well. This is wrong. A GoPro usually only comes with a helmet mount, and this is not one of the best GoPro mounts. You should therefore also plan a certain budget for the purchase of different mounts. If you want to exploit the potential of your GoPro and make better recordings, I recommend you for the beginning in any case a chest mount, a good pole, and possibly a handlebar mount for bars of different sizes. You can find links in the video description. And one absolutely necessary accessory I almost forgot such a protective cover. And this has to do with the next GoPro misconception. A GoPro is extremely rugged and durable. 
The housing of a GoPro is well made. A GoPro is waterproof and with a little luck it will survive a drop. But it is by no means extremely robust and resistant. This is mainly due to the back display. If you drop your GoPro and it falls on the display, it can easily break. This can lead to a total loss of the camera. In the past, GoPro cameras had a frame for the mount. This made the camera bigger and bulkier, but the camera and the display were much better protected. Therefore, with a newer GoPro, you should definitely use such a protective cover and screen protectors for the two displays if you want to enjoy your camera for longer. A GoPro can handle extreme temperatures well. Unfortunately, that's not true either. Overheating in particular is a problem for many. When the GoPro is used in very hot temperatures for extended periods of shooting, it can overheat very easily. Of course, this also has to do with the waterproof housing. This hardly allows for good cooling of the camera. And the high resolution naturally requires a lot of processing power, especially at high frame rates, which in turn leads to a lot of heat. Unfortunately, it is similar in the cold. Here, the battery is usually the weak point, which can no longer work well under a certain temperature. Of course, none of this is a typical GoPro problem. There are simply limits to some things, and most manufacturers have to deal with these problems. But let's talk about the image quality. A great strength of the GoPro is the good image quality, and if you want to get even better results, there are quite a few shooting settings and even manual exposure settings available. Does this mean that you can significantly improve the image quality of your GoPro recordings with the right settings, as many believe? No, because a GoPro already achieves very good results in the standard settings. And this is how it should be, because after all it is a consumer camera that should be easy to use and it should not be necessary to study the manual for hours to get good results. Nevertheless, you can of course use the settings to achieve certain improvements and of course you should know the most important settings so that you can adapt the camera to your very specific needs. You can find a tutorial on all the important settings on my channel. But as I said, don't expect miracles from the settings. By the way, I'll put some links to the most important tutorials I mentioned today in the video description. Alright, and now here come three rather provocative statements. The GoPro has been greatly improved in recent years. Unfortunately, this cannot be fully agreed. GoPro has been rather reluctant to innovate in recent years. This for example is a shot of the GoPro Hero 8. At first glance, there is hardly any difference to a shot of a current GoPro. Image quality and stabilization were already good, and it would be a lie to claim that a GoPro has fundamentally improved in recent years. But the following statement is also false. GoPro has not improved at all in recent years. This is also widely claimed, but it is not true. Fortunately, GoPro cameras have become somewhat more stable. Personally, at least in the last year, I have not had as many crashes as with earlier models. But of course, experiences can differ. And yes, GoPro has improved its action cameras in small steps, but continuously. The stabilization has gotten better, the resolution has been increased, higher frame rates are now possible even at high resolution. New sensors have been introduced, low light performance has been improved, and new features like 10-bit color or new image formats have been introduced as well. All of this was not groundbreaking, but has made the GoPro a better camera over the years. Still, I wouldn't necessarily consider the next statement to be true today either. GoPro makes by far the best action cameras. GoPro is certainly still the market leader in the segment, but competitors like DJI or Insta360 have long since caught up and built at least equally good cameras. And it was rather the competition that provided innovations and introduced new features in recent years. In my last comparison test, the Action 4 clearly came out on top. How well the new GoPro now compares with the competition and whether it can reclaim the throne will be seen in the coming weeks. A detailed test will follow soon, so stay tuned, give me a like as feedback if the video was interesting for you and see you next time.